So hello and good evening, this is Ruth Pozuelo from Curval.com and uh, today is time again for Dax Fridays. And finally, I am going to talk about running totals or cumulative totals. I've been meaning to do this video for a long time and, I, and I've never taken the time to do it. So uh, today is the day, uh, we'll do it. And because I've been so late when I promised I would do it earlier, I'm going to do also a Pareto chart. So I hope that this compensates for how late I have been doing this video. So before to start, before I start doing the video, I just want to thank Paul. Thank you, Paul, because uh, he actually sent me an Excel file with the you know everything prepared for just for me to do the video. Uh, thank you, Emilian, for that. Uh, I love it. He sends me emails when he's working on, on things and. Uh, so oh, I saw this this way and I saw this that way and, and I absolutely love them so thank you for these and finally I am doing this video and he mentioned that uh, the idea on how to solve this came from Matt he is from Australia and here is an excellent excellent post on how to do this so if you don't really like videos for learning make sure you check out his uh, blog post and if by any reason you don't understand what I'm saying, you watch the video and say, what did he say? Come here, you will understand. He made a wonderful job explaining how to create these uh, cumulative uh, totals. And uh, if you are here, I will post a link to this uh, blog post, but if you are here, check the comments because you will find people that actually respond to him and gave him another way to calculate the same thing. And all of them work. So it is quite interesting and it's, it's a good learning experience. So uh, I'm, I'm not going to say any more. We will just jump on uh, the video and explaining how cumulatives works in Power BI and DAX. Okay, so here we have our data set. We actually have two tables. Let me show you. We have a table that does not have any dates. So it has items, categories, and sales. And then we have another table that has dates because we are going to do both. I'm going to show you how to do the running totals when based on dates or how to do it based on sales. And the difference is quite important. I, I perhaps should start doing it with dates. So here we have the date, we have the total sales, and we want to create the running total. So we have already a um, total sales measure that we're going to use to calculate the running total. So we will create a new measure and we call it running sales, for example. And the way to create it is you use calculate, you get total sales and then filter. Oh, this is the American one filter. And we're going to filter on the no, sorry, on all the sales dates. So it's going to go through the uh, sales with dates table date column. And what is going to do is sales with date are less or equal sales with date and of course the max of So now, how does this work? I have a video I created for earlier 
that explains this syntax. And it took me about 30 minutes, minutes to explain it, so I'm not going to go through that in here in the detail I went in there. I will post a link to the earlier video. It's around the minute 6.22, something like that, where I go into the details on how filter and calculate operates this and works with this, okay? So make sure you check that out. But what it basically is doing is it is comparing one row to the other one and say, are you bigger or smaller than the next one? Yes do the sum. No, don't do it. So check the video out if you want to know exactly how it's calculated. If you was just want the formula, just copy it as it is. And uh, here we have our running sales. Let me... Mm, where is it? There. So. So 248, 248 crowns and dollars. That was... Uh, fun. Well, it doesn't matter. So this is how you calculate running sales against dates. And the reason why this is easier than with another column is because you have already an order in here. So the actual date gives calculate the order in which it the, the cumulative or running sales should be done. As you can see here, it says for a second fourth, third, and it is respecting, you see, 90, 180, and then it goes to 196. So it doesn't matter which order they are, the calculate knows that, or the cumulative sales knows that the third is before the fourth, and therefore that should be selected. So if we filter by dates, one more time, one more time, there. So you will see that it is calculating correctly, okay? So this is the easy part. Now, what happens when we have um, uh, another column that we want to calculate the, the cum cumulative sales or running total sales for items, for example. So here we have the mean order. Now, you cannot have the mean order like that. You, you have to rank these to make sure that our cumulative um, formula will understand in which order it needs to be calculated. Okay, because if you start filtering around, then, then the formula won't work. So the first thing we need to do is to actually create a rank, a ranking based on items and sales. So let's do that. We go to new measure, rank, Rank, I have a video on rank X, so make sure you check it out because I won't explain this in detail either, sales item. It took also like 11 minutes to explain it, but it is a video on that, so you will be able to, to follow along if you never used rank before. So here we have the, in this uh, table, it is called sum of sales. And this little formula will calculate ranking of these items, right? So here we have, we already have it sorted by sales, but if we want to sort by items, here you have it, right? So, okay, we sorted by sales. Now, what we need to calculate now is the cumulative sales. Oh, what a word. Uh, running sales, I prefer to say that. And, um, okay. Here's the issue, and I, and I think the, the here is where Matt explained it very well in his blog post. So how do we calculate this? You may think, okay, we already have ranking here, right? So how is it can it how difficult can it be? We just do the same as we did with rank. You know, we put rank in there and max and bigger than, but unfortunately that, that doesn't work. And the reason that doesn't work is just because you see something here, it doesn't mean that Power BI engine knows about it. So this is a, a table that is on the visualization pane, not in memory for Power BI engine to work with. 
So what we need to do is to create a virtual table of rank. So the DAX engine can actually use that to, to rank our values and, and calculate the cumulative sales. So this is how we are going to do that. We are going to call it running sales other column. And then we're going to use again calculate. We're going to get the sum of sales as we did before. And now we're going to use top end. Top end creates that virtual table in memory. Okay, so that's what allows DAX engine to say, okay, this is the order I should follow. And then we want to have that on all item. So let's put it to work. So now look what happens. We have uh, 14,000 plus 13 is 27 plus 13 is 41. And that is uh, correct. But then look what happens. He just doesn't add the 13. And the reason for that is how we wrote this um, measure. What we need to do is to tell top n to actually don't give us the unique values, but add on all the values that it has on the table. So we need to add sum of sales. So when it gets a table with these two in memory, it has to add both instead of just giving us one. And you see, you, do you see what happened? 54,000, which is the correct number. This is the number that you want because you want to have both, right? Otherwise you will not get the correct calculation. Um, it would be actually nice if there was a break ties for rank. I, this, well, that's a, st a story for another day. So, um, yeah, now we have a running sales uh, total. So here's the question. Can I calculate this in some other way? Of course you can. And check out Matt's uh, blog post because he, he shows like there's like a thousand ways to do it. But an obvious one is, could we do it with running sales sum? Can we do it with sum x? And of course you can. So the same is applied here. You need to tell top n to deliver the sum of sales. There you go. So now we have the correct calculation. Okay, so let's remove that. We keep calculate. You could check in DAX Studio which one is faster if, if you are having performance problems. But uh, now that we have this, the last thing we have to do is actually the Pareto, right? So we are going to create, and how do we do it? We need to have the percentage, Pareto percentage, and that will be a divide. And we are going to take our running sales and divide it by calculate. We need to have the total sales, right? That is not affected by the filters. So is sum of sales and then we have all sales item. Shoot. And we put it there. Percentage. Wait, the other way. So here we have our Pareto. How cool is this? So 80% of our sales. Okay, this is a bad example. <laughs> but well, you know how it works. So we can put it in our 
chart as a line value. So how we have the representation for our sales right in there. Brilliant. Okay. So finally I've done this video. Great. Um, so if you are as happy as I am or have done this video, let me know by liking the video. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, just let me know on the comment box or any of the social channels listed below and uh, subscribe. I publish Power BI videos every week. Have a great evening. Bye bye.